Okay, hi, this is Black and Indigenous American. I am creating this video because I thought it was important. And I was just watching some documentaries on uh, ethnic groups in the United States of America. And I just noticed people from different countries that immigrate here and they have, you know, maybe the first, second generation of people living here. They hold tight to their culture, their nationality, wherever they're from, they hold tight to it. Um, in particular, I was watching this documentary in regards to folks from Guyana in South America. And they have uh, populations who are like West African, um, Chinese, people from Portugal, um, people from Britain. Also, uh, people, I don't know if I mentioned Chinese, but yeah, Chinese people the indigenous population that was already there um, and also Indians from India just to name a few but they have a, a, a huge population of people that actually are mixed with all these different you know uh, different groups kind of like a, a jambalaya right but anyway so but I remember watching this documentary about those who migrated to uh, the United States, in particular Queens, New York City. And they have like a, a, a small community there. But I'm looking at these people and they look, their features, their phenotypes, things of that nature is so diverse. And it's because, you know, a lot of them, you know, they're mixed and some aren't mixed, but they, they hold really, really tight to their culture, food, language, um, dance, whatever, you know, that that's who they are. They are their culture, even though their DNA uh, links them to their origins. And a lot of people are also mixed because, okay, you live in a country, you have diversity, what's going to happen, right? <laughs> people are going to mix. And I have no problem with that. So then you have a population of those people who are mixed. So... I think it's a beautiful thing that the offspring from this blend who consider themselves to be uh, attached to that culture from Guyana, I think it's beautiful because to me it sets the standards so the descendants of those people don't have to choose. They're not forced to choose a particular race. That's what I... I appreciate I, that's what I also am impressed about and not just this particular country but just in general but in this country many of us are are taught to focus only on race in the black in the white like there's no other races in this freaking world like that's all you, that's the only races is just the black white race and the white race really I just don't understand why there's such a huge focus on the race aspects in this country. And then you look at other countries, in particular, like areas that are known for mixing or embracing other cultures. They just blend it together. I mean, you can see it in the food. Um, you can even see it on people's faces, their phenotype, the way they're built, their body type, everything. And for them to just focus on the culture and you know, versus the race, I think it's a beautiful thing because eventually in this country, I believe um, being a monoracial is going to be, you're going to be considered a minority, in my opinion. And those who have a blended background um, eventually will just be considered, I'm assuming, American maybe. I don't know, but... We all know the original Americans are people who are indigenous to this to this country, to this piece of land, pretty much to this freaking hemisphere. You have the original people all in up up and down the, the, the Western Hemisphere. In particular, the continents, North America, Central America, and South America. You you still have indigenous populations that live here. And some of them mix with other people. But the point is you, you have that that group of people here. This is their land. So, and I'm thinking about just culture in general. Like, 
and I'm, I want to focus on, let's say, just black American um, culture. People that have been here and there's descendants of blacks that came here via, you know, indentured, be it slavery, be it because they got it going on and they own slaves or whatever, they had money. But offsprings, descendants after those first people came here, are kind of grouped together and just labeled black. Black American or Afro American or African American. And so a lot of people focus on the race versus the culture. In my opinion, and some people may hate me for saying this, but in my opinion, I don't see white America as a culture, if that makes sense. I don't see black America as a culture. But when I see people that come to this country, like immigrants and maybe the first, second generation um, immigrants here, where even though they're Americanized, but they're taught to hold, you know, hold their culture real close and to be to be proud of that culture where they come from, you know, their ancestry culture wise, not race wise. And so sometimes I think like, OK, you have white people or people who come from the Europe area. Right. And then there's people who believe the Middle Eastern folks are white. Whatever, but I'm just focusing more, mostly on Europe. And they come to this country. Apparently, there's different classes of Europeans, right? So when they first immigrants first start coming to this country, there were people who were at the bottom of the food chain, or the bottom of the class chain, if you want to say that. They were at the very bottom. And then you had whites the way at the very top. Nowadays, people don't really, or at least, I mean, I'm not white, so maybe I just don't know. But I don't think people really care too much about a person's ethnic background when, when they're considered white in this country. Um, for instance, someone's from uh, England versus someone from Russia versus someone from Spain versus someone, well, let me take that back. Spain is categorized as Hispanic. So you have Hispanic white and you have Hispanic non-white. Um, but I wouldn't even say that's a race, like the Hispanic category. But they do have Hispanic white category. So I guess you can put that down as a race. But anyway, for the most part, I don't think, outside of like the Hispanic culture, I don't think that there is a ethnic labeling on most census records or most records in general that focuses on white folks ethnicity and black folks ethnicity. But then you have all these other people on a census record, they specify what country they come from, not necessarily culture. Hispanics have the culture label, then there's black and there's white, and then you have Asian, less, well, I guess that could be a race because that's across several countries. Um, Middle Eastern. Well, I think some Middle Easterns are categorized as white. I guess it depends on the the um, records, how they label them. But the point I'm trying to make is culture versus race. What do you think? Do you think people should focus so much on the race aspect, or should people, at least in this country, should focus on the culture? So you have people, and I'm thinking about, again, the black community, you have people who kind of lean towards the black culture, but they're not black, right? It's one thing to act black, it's another when you breathe it, you smell it, you taste it, you live it. And you have people that are not black, that live within the black community. And for the most part, they're accepted by people that know who they truly are. And they're like, oh yeah, this is so-and-so and so and this is my brother or this is my sister. Because they live in that culture. That's who they are, even though they're not black, but that's who they are. It's, it's, it's nothing fake about it. Um, even, let me just flip it, white folks, you know, a black person who lives amongst predominantly white folks with money. Because you know there's different type of white folks. <laughs> a 
Okay, honey boo boo child. <laughs> but anyway, I'm talking about white folks with money and think they, you know, superior over everybody else. Those black folks typically, um, I'm thinking of like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air type black folks. Um, there's no faking. That's who they are. They were raised in that culture. They were raised around people that spoke a certain way, talked a certain way, eat a certain way, whatever. That's the culture that they were brought up in. So some people may look at, look at them. Um, I think most of them are Republicans, and I'm kind of throwing a little politics up in there. But that's the culture that they were raised up in. You know, most of them were raised up in those black Republicans are raised up in a very affluent area. Not all, because you have some people that came from the gutter, got their money, and they flip flop their politic, uh, their political stance, right? So you have people like that, you know, that they got rich and then they changed their mind. Because <laughs> at this point, they don't need the government for, for the most part. They can pay for whatever they need to pay for. Right. So anyway, you have um, those type of black folks, but they still know where they came from. You know, they came from the gutter. You know, they ate they ate a certain cuisine. Right. So I ain't no erasing that pretty much. But I'm talking about the people that actually was raised up around those types of white folks. That's who they are. They call them Oreos. And I know that's derogatory and I apologize if I offended anybody. Um, but that's what they call them. You know, on the, on the outside, they're black or non-white. And in the inside, they are American apple pie. Okay? <laughs> and it is what it is. Um, so, as far as culture, again, I really don't think black America is really culture-based. I don't think white America is, is really culture-based. I think when you boil it down to... I don't know. I just feel like people, not necessarily immigrants, it could be just, you know, indigenous populations here, you know, native populations here, folks on reservations, but people not necessarily on a reservation, but they have their tribal community. Um, that's culture. You have people that look like me. You have people that don't look like me and don't look Native American who for the most part, are very active in their tribal community. They're very active on the powwow trail. You see them, you know? And for the most part, they live and breathe that culture. They, they, it's just not a hobby for those type of people. You know, that's who they are. And culture-wise, that's exactly who they are. And it took a while for me, again, to kind of grasp that versus the whole blood thing. Um, but I think if people get past the whole race thing and just focus on the actual culture, um, the world will be a better place. And I was just thinking about, um, like I said, people from regions of the world that are pretty diverse. For the most part, people people connect within that culture. Now you do have prejudices. And this is what I learned as far as the caste system south of the border. You have people that look pretty much white all the way down to people that looks very dark and African looking. And so even though that person may be mixed with something X, Y, and Z, but if he or she looks a certain way, they may be treated a certain way. So I've learned that as well. Um, because the population may be so mixed up, you know, trying to show paper trail and all that and whatever. It, it really doesn't matter. It, it matters on how you look. So if you look white, then you're probably going to get better uh, service and be treated better and probably have more money than someone who doesn't look white. Like the, f the further you are away from looking European, <laughs> um, the less respect you get for the most part. I'm just I'm just really generalizing this. This this does not have anything to do with every single person, but I'm just saying in general, this is what I've learned. Um, 
So they have their issues too. I'm not just sitting here saying, oh, it's a utopia for people who focus primarily on their culture. No. But, you know, whatever. I mean, that's just how I feel. I, I just... When I see Africans who immigrated here, I mean, migrated here, and they have, let's say, first generation, you know, the next generation, they were raised in American culture, but their parents were very, very stern on the upbringing and how they would carry on their, um, their culture within their group. Um, so you have that. It's kind of like they live in the two worlds, you know. They live in the world here, Americanized, and then they have to also um, live a certain way that suits their their family and the people within their ethnic group. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much my opinion about it. I think again, this country. It's becoming more and more diverse and more and more people are actually mixing with another group of people, another ethnicity. So eventually, I don't know how many years it would take if we're all here breathing <laughs> as far as, as a human species. Um, this may possibly turn into a country that focus in, focuses more on culture than race because we all were kind of look blended anyway. And... I think that what will probably be an issue will probably be those who look more European will be treated better with more money, more status, more respect, and those who look less European will be treated um, opposite of that. Um, I also think classism will be a big deal, just like it is now. The only color that matters is green. You have people that um, have a boatload of money and doors just open left and right. Even people that dislike them or their people, right, or their ethnicity, or that culture. But as soon as homeboy got some dollar dollar bills, y'all, oh, parents, they start to sit back and be like, okay, welcome to the family. Cha-ching. And you know I'm right. Cha-ching. But if you don't have dollar dollar bills on top of them having their prejudices and their biases against you and your people, they won't have nothing to do with you, right? But you start whining and dining mama and, and father-in-law, bling blinging and trips and stuff and y'all got money. Oh, things change. <laughs> things change for real. So you have classism. Um, I'm, I'm sure that would be a big deal. I'm sure religion will probably still be a big deal in some in some uh, circles and I'm assuming politics will probably be a big deal as well I think as long as there's a gap between the upper class and the poor I mean us well yeah the gap gets bigger and bigger then yeah there will be issues with politics because you know most people that don't have a lot of money, they get hit hard by anything that goes on in Washington that affects their household, you know, taxes and stuff like that. But if you got a boatload of money, even though, yeah, let me take that back, kind of, sort of, let me take it back. Because people who are wealthy, they, they're they pissed off at the government when, you know, they're taxed to death. So you have people like that, that um, they have a, a negative opinion about how much the government is in their pocketbook. So yeah, I think as long as yeah, let me just let me just say I think as long as there's a big gap between the rich and the poor and there's really no middle class, then I think there will be issues with politics. But I think if that gap gets smaller and there's a bigger middle class and less poverty, then I think politics may not matter as much. Um, I don't know. You all give me your opinions out there. This is just me ranting about something that, um, I've been thinking a lot about culture versus race because <sighs> I might've mentioned in another video, but my, my family for the most part is pretty mixed. 
And eventually, if the next generation is mixing with another ethnicity and vice versa, and then you just keep mixing and mixing and mixing, and people travel, and you got people that travel all the time, and they hooking up with folks in, in the local community, yeah. So then what? You can't tell who is what. Well, this person look like this, but really this person is this. What can you do to put people in a box? Because that's all it is. Putting people in a box. Trying to figure out who we dealing with in this country. So I guess the next box you will put them in is an economical box or class. Um, people that look more European will be treated a certain way. It won't even matter. This whole stupid one drop rule thing wouldn't even matter at that point. You're going to have a whole lot of Mariah Carey's and Alicia Keys and stuff like that looking people, Vanessa Williams. They will look closer to European to the point where they don't look like they got a drop of blood. So that could happen. But as far as culture wise, um, do we have an American culture? I don't know. I mean, I only went to one country or actually an island that was outside of the United States. So all of this information I get is from other people. I live in a very diverse um, region, so people give me their opinions and their experiences um, based on their family and their ethnicity. But I'm like, do we really have a culture like American culture? <laughs> Apple pie, baseball, you know, stuff like that. Um, I don't know. But anyway, this is just my, you know, one of my things that I like talking about and I look forward to your comments. Um, leave them down below. I'm um, good or bad. I'm open for dialogue. And um, yeah, be blessed and talk to you later. Bye bye.